Though SpaceX is currently gearing up for the inaugural launch of Starship S24 and Super Heavy Booster 7, the activity at the Starship factory extends beyond that. The company is equally dedicated to the development of new Starship Super Heavy Booster 9. Tune in to today's episode of Great SpaceX to learn more about this exciting project. Booster 9 will probably be the next shot after Booster 7. A lot of work is going on with this prototype. Booster 9 rolled out of its Starbase assembly bay and headed to the launch site on December 15th of 2022. The Super Heavy prototype ultimately completed two partial cryogenic proof tests on December 21st and the 29th, during which it was likely loaded with around a thousand tons of liquid nitrogen to simulate explosive liquid oxygen and methane propellant. B9 then returned to Starbase's factory on January 10th, 2023. Raptor engine installation has begun since last week. Over the weekend, SpaceX teams spent the two days fully installing the previous new arrivals. This week, more and more new Raptors have come. Interestingly, photographer Kevin Randolph recently took a picture of Raptor number 183 heading over to the Mega Bay for B9 installation. Check out that protective collar already on there. Thanks to significant design changes and upgrades present on B9, outfitting and testing this Super Heavy could take longer than usual. Many smaller changes are present, but the most significant by far is the addition of an upgraded version of Raptor. The engine's combustion-related hardware is likely the same as the Raptor version 2 engines present on B7, Ship 24, and Ship 25. But the hardware used to steer each engine, called thrust vector control, has been completely changed. Instead of using a complex web of plumbing and hydraulic power units bolted to the side of Super Heavy, Booster 9's 13 central Raptors will be electrically steered. That has allowed SpaceX to remove those power units, streamlining B9's exterior, and reduce the already rat's nest of plumbing required to fuel, control, power, and steer dozens of high-performance rocket engines on one booster. SpaceX has been testing Electric Raptor TVC for months at its McGregor, Texas development facilities, but it's unclear if the new technology has progressed to the point that 13 upgraded engines are ready to be installed on B9. In the meantime, SpaceX may install B9's fixed outer ring of 20 Raptor version 2 engines, none of which gimbal or need new electric TVC hardware. Once all 33 engines are installed, it's likely that Booster 9 will be thoroughly tested to ensure that all 13 electrically steered engines work well together before, during, and after numerous static fire tests. SpaceX will also need to verify that the batteries likely powering those new systems function as expected. During the peak stresses they will likely experience, the electric TVC would need to rapidly redirect more than 3,000 tons or around 6.6 .6 million pound force of thrust multiple times per second. The peak power required from Super Heavy's batteries will likely be immense as a result. For now, the start of Super Heavy B9's own static fire test campaign could be months away and we'll have to wait until Starbase's only orbital launch mount, which is currently occupied by B7 and Ship 24 and Starship's first orbital launch campaign, is vacated. With that orbital launch debut unlikely to happen before March 2023, Booster 9 has plenty of time to relax inside Starbase's wide bay. Right now, the top priority remains Starship's maiden orbital flight. SpaceX is eager to launch Starship, a fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle designed to go to Earth orbit, the moon, and possibly even further destinations like Mars. The company has been striving to perform an orbital launch test of its mega rocket since the summer of 2021, conducting a series of limited static fire tests of the booster's engines. In November, SpaceX ignited 14 Raptors simultaneously for 10 seconds, followed by a wet dress rehearsal of the fully integrated 394 foot tall or 120 meter rocket on January 23rd. 
The most recent demonstration was the company's first full-scale static fire test of the system, even with two of the Raptor engines not joining in. The pending orbital test flight involves Starship's liftoff to space, in which the upper stage will perform less than a full orbit around Earth before re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Following its orbital test, SpaceX will move ahead with operational launches of Starship that will serve as a test program, according to SpaceX Senior Director of National Security Space Solutions, Gary Henry. We very, very quickly converge, converge on a system that we can operationalize, he said. The company will begin by launching its next generation Starlink satellites to orbit, which Henry said are waiting very patiently to be launched on Starship. The company's medium lift Falcon 9 rocket is not able to deliver the oversized Gen 2 Starlinks to orbit, hence the company's urgency to get the Starship program off the ground, literally. SpaceX also has a $2.89 billion contract with NASA using Starship to land humans on the moon by late 2025 as part of the space agency's Artemis 3 mission. There's a lot riding on this highly anticipated orbital test run of Starship. Although the test flight is not expected to be perfect, just good enough for SpaceX to plan upcoming launches of its mega rocket. In another important piece of news, the White House is proposing a $27.2 billion budget for NASA in the fiscal year of 2024, which is a 7.1% increase from 2023 that roughly keeps pace with inflation. The agency is planning to spend up to $1 billion on space station deorbit modules. One of the biggest new initiatives in the budget is the ISS deorbit tug, which would be used to perform the final lowering of the station's orbit to ensure it re-enters over the South Pacific. The $180 million NASA is requesting for the tug gives us a healthy start for the project, said Kathy Luters, NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations, in a media teleconference about the budget. While budget documents did not include a spending profile for the project, Luters said the agency came up with a cost estimate a little bit short of about $1 billion. The exact amount, she said, will depend on what proposals the agency receives from an upcoming request for proposals, or an RFP. Our goal is to go out with an RFP, she said. We're hoping to get a better price than that. Moreover, the Artemis campaign's budget presentation featured a revised timetable for lunar exploration, revealing that Artemis II, the inaugural manned mission using the Space Launch System slash Orion configuration, is scheduled for November of 2024. Additionally, it disclosed the date of the uncrewed Artemis I mission that NASA officials disclosed in a March 7th. Briefing. That schedule shows a December of 2025 launch date for Artemis 3, which will include the first human lunar landing of Artemis using SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander and spacesuits being developed by Axiom Space. We're still pressing to make Artemis 3 in 2025 and proceed on from there, Bob Cabana, NASA Associate Administrator, said at the briefing. However, Artemis 4, previously projected for 2027, had slipped to September of 2028 in the new manifest. That will also feature a lunar landing using Starship as well as use of the Lunar Gateway. It'll also be the first launch of the upgraded Block 1B version of SLS with additional payload capacity, which on that mission will be used to deliver the IHAB habitation module to the gateway. NASA officials at the briefing did not discuss the Artemis 4 slip, but Cabana mentioned the complexity of the mission. We're doing our very best to keep it on schedule, he said. Yes, it slipped a little bit, but there's a lot that has to come together for Artemis 4 between the enhanced upper stage, the gateway, gateway logistics, the second mobile launcher, all of that has to work. And that's all the information we have for you today, my friends. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.